Today, we will explore the timeless fairy tale of Sleeping Beauty as it is brought to life through one of the most beloved ballets. This enchanting ballet has captured the hearts of audiences for centuries with Petipa's stunning choreography, Tchaikovsky's breathtaking music, and its own take on a timeless story and characters. Discover the significance of this beautiful ballet and why it has endured as a classic tale of love, hope, and the triumph of good over evil. The ballet opens in a grand palace. As trumpets sound and courtiers gather, King Florestan XIV and his queen host a grand christening in honor of their newborn daughter, Princess Aurora. The air is filled with joy and excitement as the lilac fairy, Aurora's principal godmother, and her entourage of fairies arrive bearing gifts of beauty, wit, generosity, liveliness, and intelligence. However, the festivities take a dark turn when the powerful and evil fairy Carabos, who hasn't been seen for 50 years, arrives uninvited. Mortally insulted by the lack of an invitation, she places a curse upon the young princess. Though the lilac fairy softens the curse, Aurora, on her 16th birthday, will still prick her finger on a spindle and fall into a deep sleep, to be awakened only by a prince's kiss after a hundred years. While the fairies guard their beloved goddaughter, the king issues a decree to ban all spindles from the kingdom, hoping to prevent the curse from coming true. During the first act, we are transported 16 years into the future. As the preparations for Princess Aurora's 16th birthday celebration are underway, a group of village women knitting with spindles catch the attention of the supervising Catalabut. Reminding them of the kingdom's prohibition against spindles, he threatens them with punishment. The king and queen, accompanied by four suitors for the princess, soon arrive, and the king demands that the women be taken away to prison for their crime. However, the women beg for mercy, and the queen pleads on their behalf, leading the king to grant them forgiveness, much to the villagers' delight. Amidst the festivities, Princess Aurora dazzles her suitors with her beauty and grace. The highlight of this act is the iconic Rose Adagio, which is a dance involving Princess Aurora and the four suitors competing for her hand. The Rose Adagio is a tour de force of classical dance, featuring intricate and challenging movements. The ballerina playing Princess Aurora must dance with each of the four suitors, balancing on one leg and extending the other in a beautiful and daring arabesque. But their revelry is abruptly interrupted when Aurora pricks her finger on a spindle held by an old woman in the crowd, who is revealed to be the wicked fairy Carabos. With the lilac fairy's arrival, the king and queen are reminded that their daughter is not dead, but merely asleep for 100 years. The sleeping princess is carried to the castle, and the lilac fairy casts a spell of slumber over the entire kingdom, safeguarding everyone there with an impenetrable forest. What will happen next is shrouded in mystery, as we wait for Aurora's awakening. The second act takes place 100 years later, where Prince Desiree, his companions and tutor Galifron enter the scene. They venture into a forest clearing. Amidst the sounds of merrymaking and archery, the prince's heart is heavy with longing for true love. It is then that the lilac fairy, his godmother, appears before him and reveals the sleeping princess Aurora, captivating him with her beauty and grace. With each elusive encounter, the prince becomes increasingly enamored and sets out to awaken her from her enchanted slumber. Undeterred by the obstacles in his path, Prince Desiree falls to his knees before the lilac fairy, beseeching her to lead him to the sleeping princess. The duo embarks on a journey to the castle, where the prince encounters a world frozen in time. However, thinking only of Aurora, he rushes to her side, breaking the spell with a single kiss. As Aurora and her court awaken, the room comes alive with a dazzling display of light and wonder, and the prince implores the king to let him marry the newly awakened princess. With a resounding yes, the prince and Aurora are finally united in love. Finally, the ballet reaches its last act. As the sun sets on the kingdom, the court gathers to witness the union of Princess Aurora and Prince Desiree. The air is filled with anticipation as the couple prepares to embark on their journey of love and companionship. As they exchange their vows, they are surrounded by a host of beloved fairy tale characters, Puss in Boots, Red Riding Hood, Cinderella, Princess Florine, and the Bluebird, among others. Each of these cherished guests presents a story as a gift to the newlyweds, weaving a tapestry of wonder and magic. One of the most memorable parts of the third act is the Bluebird Pas de Deux, a duet between Princess Florine and the Bluebird. This duet showcases the technical prowess of the dancers as they soar across the stage in a series of dazzling lifts and pirouettes. 
The bluebird's costume, which is usually decorated with shimmering feathers and intricate beading, enhances the overall beauty of the performance. As the festivities reach their peak, Aurora and Desiree take center stage, dancing a grand pas de deux that captures the essence of their love. The whole assembly joins in a dance to honor the couple, and the joyous celebration reverberates throughout the kingdom. In the final moments, the lilac fairy appears, bringing with her a blessing for the newlyweds. As the fairy tale characters and members of the court look on, Aurora and Desiree bask in the radiance of their love, united forevermore.